This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. Okay, so macros are repetitive tasks. I want to show you different ways that you can create macros because it's always been available in access to create macros via a form and other locations within the properties. I want to show you with an example on a form first and then I want to show you an example of how to create a macro just using the major create macro um, opportunity. So first of all, here's a table that I have and this table has a macro in it already. Let me collapse my navigation pane here. I have four fields, the ID field, the standard cost, the retail price, and the product name. Now, this company has a calculation, 1.65, so it's a 65% markup on anything that they sell, and they want this particular table, when you type in the standard cost, they want the retail price to automatically calculate. So a macro has been attached to the field called standard cost in this form, so on this form, it's been attached to the standard cost. It says when I type in the standard cost, automatically create the retail price for me. It's just, it's automatic. So let's go down to the next record and look at it again. If I type in, uh, now originally when I'm typing this, it would work also, show me the retail price. So let's look at where they did that. So first of all, we wanna go into design view. And when we get into design view, the property sheet needs to be open. And on the property sheet, you want the event tab. And all of these events are possible for creating macros. And after a while, you start to understand what all these mean, but they pretty much make sense. On load is when a form loads. On click is when you click on something. Um, after insert, see, it makes sense. When you delete something, here's what will happen. So what I did is I went to the standard cost control, and on the standard cost control, on lost focus is the event. So when I leave that field, when you're typing and you leave the field on lost focus, create a macro. And here's all I did to create the macro. I simply went out to the end, you click into the line first, and out to the end, this little ellipse or the build button, you click on the build and it opens up the macro design location. So you notice my tools, now my ribbon, or my macro tools, my design ribbon is there, and all my tools for creating a macro, and this is just the little macro that I created. This particular macro is called set value, and the set value macro just has to have two things, the retail price, and the retail price is the name of a field, so it has to be in square brackets, and then what do you want it to do? What kind of math do you want it to perform, and I just wanted it to calculate a multiple, it wanted it to multiply the standard cost field, that's why it's in square brackets, times 1.65%. So now this macro is going to be applied every time someone leaves, let me close here, it's gonna be applied every time someone leaves the standard cost row, the, that line inside of the form. It's a really nice little macro. But what I want you to focus on is where I'm creating the macro. It's via the events inside of the properties. Okay, let's go ahead and close that one. Now just, no, I don't wanna save my changes. Now just so you know, I've added one retail price in here, so not to worry about that. But this is my next step. This is the macro that I actually want to illustrate for you and create with you. Here's our task. Our task is this particular table has additions to it. Every day there is an addition to this table. And the reason is there's a person at, this is just my scenario, right? There's a person at the office that doesn't have access to access. And so what that person does is they use an Excel spreadsheet every single day. So they create the information that I need inside of my access table in Excel. And I just want a quick, very quick way to bring the information from their Excel spreadsheet and put it into the access table. Okay, real life, you wouldn't have something silly like this for product name. But what I did is I wanted it to make it, I wanted to make it extremely clear which items that I was bringing in. So for this example, I have silly product names, but it'll be clearly visible which ones come in. Also, I've completed the retail price on these and currently the retail price is empty except for that one item 
in my um, Excel, excuse me, in my Access table. Okay, so let's go ahead and close. And this is called Example for Access Macro. Example for Access Macro. All right, let me close out of that. And now I'm going to go ahead and close my A Product table for Macro. But I'm going to open this because I don't want to forget what this table is called. So this is my little cheat sheet I'm planning ahead. All right, so my macro is simply going to go out to Excel. It's going to grab that data from the spreadsheet, bring it in to this table, add it to this table, and then I want this table to open so that it opens on the screen. Oh, excuse me, that's the form. I'm sorry. Let me scroll up. The table has the same name. There we go. And then I want it to open the table so I can see that the event actually happened, and I want a message box to tell me I did a great job. So that's what I want my macro to do. Let's go do it. So we do create, and I want my macro screen to open. So now I'm on, I'm not specifically in an object. I'm just creating a macro for all of access to use wherever I want to. OK, exclamation point is properly placed on this button. Make sure that you choose the show all actions so that you have every action available for you, every single action. And I'm going to resize so I can see my actions clearly. So first of all, my action is a data import export action. So I'm going to drop the arrow down. And this is the item that I want right here, import export spreadsheet. So I can double click, and it automatically pops it now into the area where I'm going to create the macro. And I just follow the leader. And as I follow the leader, I'm just going to do what it asks me to do. So transfer type, yes, it's an import. That's exactly what it is. Spreadsheet type, it is an Excel workbook, but you see the drop down arrow, you can change it if it's not. It is an Excel workbook. Now it wants to know where do I want to put this? What's the name of the table? And because it specifically says table name, I don't have to enclose it in square brackets, so I just type the name of the table. A product, ta oops, I hit my cap locks there. You have to spell it correctly. If you make a typo here, it won't work properly. And now what's the file name? Where is the Excel spreadsheet that's going to be imported into this access table? Well, here's my little trick. Because I have to put the entire file name, I just go find it in my computer. So this is the file I'm going to bring in. Right click, go to Properties, and in the Properties dialog box right here, you can highlight, copy, close out of that, and paste it in. So now I don't have to worry about typos. And then follow up with the, the uh, backwards slant. And Whoops, I'm sorry, hit the wrong button there. Example for access macro. I want to make sure I spell it correctly. Example for access macro. And so now I'll type the rest of it. Let me capitalize it properly. Example for access macro. Yes, I spelled it correctly. Now, does my data have field names? Yes, it does, which simply means that the first row are the titles. And I do not have a range, so I'm finished with that one. I'm going to go ahead and collapse. And now's a good time to start saving. So let me go ahead and hit Save. And we'll call this Class Example Import Excel. That way, I can continue to save my macro. And if something happens, I won't lose it. Now, that's the first step, my Import Export Spreadsheet. The second thing, remember, is I wanted to open the table. So again, you can go over here in the Action Catalog, and you can find your action. Or if you know what it is, you can just type. I just have to keep typing here until I get to Table. Open Table, that's right. And I hit Tab, and it says, OK, well, what table do you want to open? Drop the arrow, a product table for macro. Yes, in Data Sheet View, and yes, Edit Mode. So the rest of those are perfect. That one finished very quickly, wouldn't you agree? So let's collapse that, get it out of the way, hit Save. And the last thing I want is the message box. So down here, it's under User Interface Commands, and there is a message box. So you know you can double click to add things into the macro design, or you can click and drag. Now you see when you have the no symbol, it just means it won't drag in. Or you can click and drag and let go. And now it says, well, what do you want the message to be? Congrats. The Excel data has been imported, whatever you want it to say. Now remember, whoever your user is determines on how formal or informal you're going to be on these messages. Do I want it to beep? Yes. Um, type, what kind of a message? I want an informational message. That just determines the little icon that's on it. And what's the title for this one? Import complete. 
save. Okay, now I can close my macro and I can run it from the navigation pane or that's what the red exclamation point is. So let's just test it out and see if it works. Well, that part worked, right? I got my message box. Congrats, the Excel data has been imported. See, there's my informational piece. There's my title. And I say, okay, it opened the table that I asked it to open. And absolutely, there are the records that I asked it to import for me. So again, I put those silly product names on there, but because I wanted it to be so clearly obvious for you. In the real world, what would have happened is whether I had one record or 100,000 records, it would have brought every one of those new records in and placed it, imported it into my a product table for macro. I love it. Okay, now let's go ahead and close the table, close the macro, and just remind you where that's stored. Right down here, macros, there it is. Class example, import Excel. So from this point forward, if I wanted to create the import again, all I have to do is double click. So if I do this on a daily basis, I just set it up so every day I click the little icon there and say it imports all my data from Excel. If I want to modify this macro, I right click, I go into design view, and now I have design view open and I simply select the element or the piece that I want to modify. Don't forget about your expand and collapse. If I expand everything, I can see everything quickly and easily. Or if I collapse, it collapses everything down to a more condensed view. Regardless of how you're viewing it, now you know how you can get started creating macros. All you have to learn is which one of these actions do you need? But folks, they make sense. So go exploring, look for what makes sense, give it a shot, and many times that's going to work beautifully for, for you. So go play with those macros and see what kind of repetitive tasks you can create in your access databases. It's time to answer a pop quiz question on macros. What is one way to create a macro? A, right click on a table field. B, begin in the backstage. C, use the create ribbon and select macro. D, none of the above. Seize the proper answer here. You do go to the Create Ribbon, click on the Macro button, and that will begin your process to create a macro. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven-day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.